question. Sam Whiskey. Oh, boy. Uh, what does Rolo and James think of vetting your business partner's future wife? Man, that now your head's in the right place, buddy. That is, you know what? Makes perfect sense. Here's what I'll tell you. It, this is this is gold, and I'm glad somebody thought to bring it up. Mm -hmm. That is a big thing, man. If you mm -hmm. if you business, first of all, I don't have any partners. I don't have any business partners. I don't believe mm -hmm. in it. Like that is just you. Just I'm a much more of a lone wolf in terms of the things I do. But I got to tell you, if you're gonna have a business partner, if you're gonna have a Steve Wozniak to your Steve Jobs, boy, meet their spouse. Meet their spouse. Find out if they got mm -hmm. a prenup. If you can have any influence on your partner to make sure that they have a prenup, if they're getting married, if you have a business partner and they're getting married, you got to get them to get a prenup. You got to mm -hmm. do it because I have guys who their business gets burned alive by their partner mm -hmm. getting divorced. Right. Right. I, I had, had a, a guy, I had yeah. a very public, it was in the New York Post, one of the divorces I did, where the wife went out and just destroyed this guy's business goodwill. Just, she was so mad at him because he was flying off to Miami and banging strippers in Miami. And mm -hmm. she was so mad at him. She took a golf club to his Ferrari and his Lamborghini and his Bentley. And then she went, and you know what, that you could, he could, he had enough money, he could buy new ones. But man, she went after his business partners and she went after his customers. And she said to the, you know, did, to the partner, did you know he stole two million from you? Did you know that he did that? And it, this guy's whole life got set on fire. And, and, and God, I felt so bad for his business partners because his business right. partners didn't marry this psychopath. His business partners were like, dude, we just have business with this person. We don't have a choice. We don't get to tell him who to marry. So, yeah, man, if you if I would vet my partner, if possible, their spouse or potential spouse uh, before I made him my partner, I would want to know their spouse. I'd want to get into mm -hmm. to some arrangement because you know, forensic accounting, which is going through the books, can be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if someone's going through a divorce, like you do not want someone doing a colonoscopy on your business, man, uh, because your partner is getting divorced. That is a very disruptive thing. Yeah. I was going to say, I, um, I've i worked with enough guys like this, especially in, when I was working in my previous uh, incarnation mm -hmm. in Wine and Spirits. I yeah. used to work with guys who went through like nasty divorces. And these are guys who own import-export companies and they push yeah. a lot of money around, right? Yeah. And um and they, whenever they wanted to do another project or a new brand or something like that, they had a much more difficult time getting investors or getting people like motivated to want to be a part of that because they don't know if the project that they're going to be investing in is going to end up in a divorce settlement because right. this guy, he's alpha male in every other aspect of his life, except for when he gets in, involved with a woman and he turns into this like this simpering piece of shit. Well, why did why did Bezos's court case never see a courtroom? Why did Jeff Bezos case never see a courtroom? Because if she had litigated that case all the way through, she could have literally taken down Amazon. She could have taken down the company because his interest in Amazon, which she was entitled to half of, if divided and given to someone else, he would have lost majority stake. He could have lost his majority ownership stake in Amazon because it would have been split with him and her. So this had the potential to completely destroy the company. It could have been subject to a takeover, essentially, because his his interest would have been diluted by 50 percent. So, of course, he settled so that he could keep the stock. And by the way, even to just create the liquidity to be able to give to her any liquidity was he had to potentially sell or dilute values of, of his individual interest because that's what he's buying. So, yeah, it can take down a divorce, an ugly, high profile divorce can take down an entire industry. It can take down a company. It can take certainly take down a household or an individual. It can take down, you know, I, I have seen divorces, ugly divorces. And again, I always tell people divorce is like a table. Mm -hmm. There's you and your spouse and your spouse's lawyer and your lawyer. And just like a table, if one leg is off, it doesn't matter how fucking straight the other three legs are, that table's falling down. So I can be the most reasonable, conciliation-minded person. You can be the most reasonable person. The other lawyer can be the most reasonable person. If you got one unreasonable person in that four-top equation, this thing's a shit show. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. All it takes is one lawyer or one litigant. And by the way, the litigant is usually the problem, not the lawyer. Because we spend, I spend more of my time trying to convince my clients to see things clearly and pragmatically mm -hmm. and to realize this ain't checkers, it's chess. And think about strategically and think about it dispassionately. 
This is a business transaction when you're getting divorced. Think about it that way. Cost benefit analysis, upside risk, downside risk. Think about that stuff. So I, I think ultimately, like, yeah, this is a huge, huge piece of thing. This could, this could, it can upend any business, even the largest businesses in the world are vulnerable when it comes to things like divorce.